Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel on human design. Well, by popular request, lines that suck are back for a second round. You got very excited about it and, um, well, I've responded. So today we're going to be looking at four different gates. We're going to be looking at the 34, the 22, the 16 and the 46. And I'm going to go into one of those uh, difficult characteristic lines in each one of those gates. But before I do that, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Richard Beaumont. I've been doing human design for more than 25 years, 20 of those training professional analysts. All right, let's get on with it. Now, a lot of you wanted to know about Machismo, which is the 34 line three. Um, and that came up more than any other which is strange, really, because that was one I was going to do in the first in the first episode, but I didn't have enough uh, room or time. 34-3, Machismo. The blue line, that's the lifelong learning. The indiscriminate display of power. In the exaltation, the great malefic, where Machismo, unfortunately, is invariably backed up by power. This is an exaltation only in that it is natural and not contrived. The display of power that defines any role. And the detriment, a reasoned and calculated display. The communication of disinformation. The calculated display of power in order to define the role. So let's say you've got that in your chart and you're walking around with it going, what is this? You know, what is it? Well, what is it? The 34th gate is in the sacral center, which means it's a power. It's a power that can keep on keeping on. And what kind of power is it? It's in the circuitry, the individual circuitry. It is individual power. The gate is the, the, the power of the great is the name of this. So the power of the great, probably the strongest power that exists in the sacral, is here. How can I describe what this power is? I think um, I have the 34 myself, but in the second line. I'll get, tell you a little story and, and uh, see if this will give an idea. I was 19 and um, I'd left school. Uh, I was doing some training uh, before going to university and I'm back in my hometown and my hometown has a has a long hill in it and the hill is part of the main um, the main uh, street and I'm walking down there fairly late at night and I see coming towards me eight people now unfortunately I knew these people these were my school chums um when i was at school well they weren't really my chums they were more like my enemies you know you can have enemies as a boy and uh, i was walking down the hill and they were walking up the hill down the bottom and i'm not a great runner and there were eight of them um and i have the 34 2 the line of momentum so as I walked down towards the hill, I thought about running away and I thought, I, you know, I'm just not a good runner. Uh, and it's not a good thing to run away when um, when you're not a good runner. So I walked towards them and I felt myself really um, kind of gain in height and power. And I imagine this was the 34-2 coming out. A great power came through the body and uh, I met up with them and uh, they were just wandering around, basically. And yeah, it wasn't very nice. One of them picked up a milk bottle and um, said, we got much stronger since we were at school. And because I've got quick reactions, I disarmed this person, threw it away. And I said, well, you know, no need for that. Come on, guys, I'm going this way. Where are you going? You know, and in the end, I turned the whole of them around and we then walked together. It was um, an uneasy alliance, if you like because I wasn't going to take any nonsense despite being very overnumbered because I felt this power in me. And this is my point. Um, when you come to machismo, I think about it like um, someone who's really in your face, like a, 
like an Italian who thinks you've stolen his spaghetti, you know, really there. The, all that power is being displayed. It's natural in you to display the power, but it's a trial and error line. It's the third line. And the harmony to that is in common sense in the 34-6, which is the ability to use power subtly. And the third, the third line doesn't really know that, especially if they're young, to begin with. So it's just the display of power, to use power, to overcome what is in the individual's way. And they may not be able to ask nicely. They may just jump down your throat with it. Um, as we see here, uh, a reason and calculated display in the detriment, the calculated display of power in order to define the role. You know, they may swear at you and say they're going to do this and that. It doesn't mean that they are going to do that, but it is a it is a frightening thing. It can it can frighten people because of the amount of power in it. And just in the story, like in the story that I told you, you don't know when it's going to, when that response is going to come and that power is going to come. It's there to help you survive in the now. So think about that. It's there to help you to survive in the now. And in my example, you know, eight against one ain't really fair odds, but the power comes out and it intimidates those who are trying to intimidate you. You know, this is what it's for. It's power of the great. So someone who has it in the third line has access to that power but it can come out at the wrong moment it can be over displayed uh let's say this person has an open solar plex and so it can have an emotional an over amplified emotional charge with it about something that may not even be true the only thing that's true is that they're displaying their power in order to get you into or get you away from them or defeat you in some way that's what it is so, as I've said before, I found that the, the characteristics that we have in us are often needed at some point. And I gave you my example. The 34-3 is someone, uh, I have a, a good friend who has that in the personality son, and he is very much in your face about this and that. And, um, and it can be about something that's going on in the world that I'm not interested in. But he certainly makes me laugh in the way that he's so overboard with with displaying this power. Um, I find it I find it funny. I said, well, you know, you should get your own YouTube uh, channel, mate, because, you know, you're Mr. Angry, I think we'll call you. Now, remember, it's part of a manifesting generated channel. So it has both anger and it has um, frustration in it, as well as um as well as having uh, the ability to be at peace and the ability to be satisfying. You know, it's satisfying if you've got the full channel to do work that you love. Very frustrating and angry, and the energy comes in you, and it, it must come out. It's not like they necessarily want to do it in the detriment, yes, in order to make their point, but it's still an energy within them. So I want you to understand that. Um, and for the person that has it, when they're feeling that energy come through them, if it is inappropriate, and if you think about the common sense um, harmony to that, then this energy has to come out. And one of the best ways I've found to bring it out, rather than bring it out on, on people, not that I have it in the third line, but rather than uh, be destructive with it, release the energy, release the energy. And that can be done with a fist going down on a table, you know, get rid of that energy in the, and realign after that energy has been released. That's something that I would advise you to try and let me know what happens. <laughs> okay, um, another one. Um, I was asked to do the 22-2 in detriment. Now, the 22 is um, in the solar plex, so it's an emotional energy. Uh, it's in the, uh, the hexagram of, of grace, the gate of openness. It's really, um, it is a very graceful energy. 
And here in the charm school in line two, in the blue line, the belief that style can mask nature. The ability to successfully delude oneself and others, the possibility to attract others with an emotional style, and in the detriment, the legalization of form over substance, where the style is energized at the expense of awareness. So what is this about? This is this is an emotional energy. It is in the second line, which means it's a hermit line, which means you're projecting upon this person. You're seeing into them the charm, the social charm. It's part of a channel of openness, which is a social channel. It's the ability to be able to be very good at dealing with strangers, um, easy to make contact and uh, draw the attention of others to whatever it is that you want to draw you draw the attention to and they'll do it through style through style so it's really about the style rather than being able to deliver something new to whatever's going on after all the second line is very gifted is unnatural but also it is unaware of its own talents and it may be drawing attention in, in, in this charming, delightful way and yet have nothing to say at the end of it. You know, it's a paper tiger. It may not be what the what you're looking into. They don't they may not have. So it's a lot of style, really. And I've seen this overplayed in, in different open solo plexes. Um, and it has a you can tell that it's a little bit over the top. That's what I've seen. <clears throat> and when I say over the top, I mean, it's a little bit too um, glitzy when it, come, when it comes to it. It can be beautiful, but a little bit too much. It's where the style is really accented rather than whatever it is that they're trying to attract attention to. So if you've got this in you, then know that you are good at attracting attention to other people's attention and make sure you're attracting their attention to something that someone else can talk about or something that you know about and remember we're talking about a characteristic we're talking about one characteristic out of all the gates that you have in your chart so don't overemphasize these negative uh, negative sounding detriments Realize it's just part of your nature. It's not the whole of you. Um, you may have a brilliant mind, so you're attracting attention about something, but your brilliant mind comes in and then can speak on your behalf about whatever it may be. It can be that you may not have the knowing in that particular thing, but you can draw their attention to something else where you really do know and open them up in that way. Um, the next one we're going to look at is the 16 and the 16 line five, the line of the Grinch. So funny. So the 16, where is the 16? What is it? It's a communication gate. It's a gate in the throat. It's the gate of skills and it's the hexagram of enthusiasm. So here we have it in the Grinch. The refusal to share in enthusiasm. This is in the blue line. The power to avoid enthusiasm for the sole purpose of being converted. As with Dickens's Scrooge, eventual conversion leads to greater and more enduring enthusiasm. In, in italics, a lack of confidence in the expression of skills that needs the encouragement of others. And the other side, in the detriment, the perverse feeling that sharing in enthusiasm hampers individual development. Why should I be happy when, etc.? A lack of confidence in the value of encouraging others. So, what is it? It's a gate of skills. It is the voice uh, classically uh, taught. It is the voice that says, I experiment or I, or I don't experiment. Uh, to me, I don't know many people that say, I experiment with the 16. 
but they certainly are enthusiastic or not. And when they're not, it's like, ugh. You know, it's almost like a, dis a distaste in the mouth. Ugh. No, I don't want any of that. They can be very pernickety in this aspect. With the fifth line, we're dealing with projection on them. It's not the second line where they're seeing through to the other and the charm of the other in the second line in the 22. We're looking at the fifth line. So people are going to project upon them that they have the skills. But what's going on for them? If they don't have the whole channel, if they don't have the 48 at the other end, this incredible channel of um, the wavelength is something that can really draw people, bring people into your wavelength, bring understanding to people. That's what the whole channel is there. But if you've got the 16 and you don't have the depth, logical solutions in the 48, you know, you're looking for the depth and think, well, I'm not really, I'm not really that talented. Now they may have skills and people can see, but they don't really want to put themselves out there until people encourage them again and again. So they need encouragement to be able to go into whatever the skills are that they may have. Uh, why should I bother um, to show my talent if I don't, if I think there are other people that are better is another way of looking at it. And if you think about the circuitry, the 16 is from the logical circuitry, it has this critical side to it. So they can see where they don't have enough depth or whatever. But if they're encouraged and they need other people to encourage them and they find they really do have the skill, that it isn't just a projection that they really have it, well, then they become enthusiastic about their skills. Like Scrooge, you know, bar humbug to Christmas, and then, hey, he was Mr. Christmas. It's about really seeing that they don't know if they have the skills or not, and encouragement is needed. So if you have that in your chart, consider that. Consider that. And if you've got enough encouragement, you've got enough people recognizing that in you, see what happens. OK, and the final one is in gate 46, uh, had requests for this one as well. 46 is the gate of determination of the self. It's the hexagram of pushing upward. It's in the G center and the G center is about identity. The 46 is about being in the right place at the right time. It's a abstract gate so it's about expanding through the experience you're here to grow if you have this gate to grow through time to grow through experience to add to your character and if you have it in the second line you've got it in the prima donna now this has no blue line so this means that it is as it is there is no development necessary in this. It's something that's hardwired into you. In the exaltation, a difficult and demanding nature that's, that succeeds despite its behavior because of the depth of its talents. The, de the determination to succeed that may offend, offend others. And in the detriment, unrealistic demands and offensive nature of egocentric mediocrity, the determination to be treated as a success before it has been realized. So Rarin talking about this um, says that people will, others will look into someone with the prima donna because it's a second line. You look in, you see what they may be unaware of, but you can see the, the, um, the gifts in them and people looking in see that this is someone who thinks that they are in the right place at the right time so that's being in the experience if you have this in your chart it's really about being totally in the experience and if you're really in an experience it's creative you're going to learn something from going through that experience in the detriment, 
um, you know, they always think they are in the right place at the right time. So they're not prima donnas to themselves. They're just really in the experience. But because they've got the second line and because it carries this gift quality, this natural quality about it, they may well be able to perform in the way that is necessary. And when I think about something like this, I think about Marilyn Monroe, perhaps. Um, if you think about one of the last films that she made, and it was a cowboy film. And I think you had on in the waiting in the uh, on set was John Wayne and Errol Flynn and another major star. And they're all just hanging around waiting for Marilyn. And the director says, go and, go and get Marilyn. Go, go and find her. Where is she? And the assistant goes and comes back and says, well, Marilyn says she wants another glass of champagne before she'll go on. What shall I do? And the director said, give her the champagne. She's the star. Without her, there's no film. Give her what she wants. You know, she may have a difficult uh, nature, but we need her. The other stars are waiting for her. So there is this quality that really can come out and they can succeed, even if they have this air about them that, you know, they're always in the right place at the right time. You know, it, it carries a vibe around it that can offend other people. This kind of specialness, this, this prima donna-ishness. Um, I've got another story about this too. I, uh, I was into human design, um, long, long, long time ago, as you know, and I was trying to get a website built and someone had recommended this guy to me and he had this line. And I said, well, look, and I want a website to be able to do this and this. He said, yes, Richard, yes, Richard, yes, we can do that. Yes, yes, we can do that. We can even do this. And he sounded as if he really knew what he was talking about. I thought, wow, really, you can do this? He goes, yes, yes. And I was paying him every week to build the bloody thing. In the end, it was a mediocre thing. In fact, it was a website that I couldn't even use. You were looking at the, yes, he had all the, the graphics out there and it did various functional things, but then bits of code would come up in between. So, you know, when it came down to the actual experience, he didn't have the, the real skills to be able to pull it off, but he certainly thought he was the best thing since sliced bread. And I kind of believed him. I was taken in by that. He was saying, yeah, you want it secure, Richard. You know, I've got a, I've got a mate, you know, I've worked with these big companies and I can get you your server into a mountain that can never be penetrated and, you know, no one will interfere with it. And all this nonsense. Anyway, he took, he took me and I never used the website because it was a bit, uh, it was, well, actually I did use it for a little while, um, but it was too dysfunctional and the guy was too dysfunctional. And it's not because of this gate and line. It was because of, um, I guess, just through his experience in life, uh, among other things. So that's my example. Um, I would love to say to you, well, look, he did a fantastic job anyway, like Marilyn Monroe. He really was a star. But it was more of the detriment, like it was didn't actually have the or at least I didn't see and I wasn't prepared to, to continue to fund something that wasn't working. Uh, I do break the bond after a while. If something isn't working, that is my nature after all. Um, anyway, I just thought <laughs> I just thought I'd add that. OK, so I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, uh, please like and share and subscribe. I really would appreciate that. And I will see you again with something completely different very soon. Bye for now.